Twitch stream. And we're live. Welcome once again, everybody, to Quest and Quill, Facing the Frontier. We are perfectly on time, actually. So that's really, really good of us. Congratulations to us. Does, uh, does anybody have any shout outs or any announcements they want to make? Um, mm. Shout out to all, all the viewers out there. Love you. Thank you for watching. And we're going to deliver the best DD sesh ever, week in, week out. Stay tuned. Oh, yeah. Shout out to all the mamas. Happy Mother's Day this Mama. Sunday. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Um, if you're looking at this, whether it's YouTube, Twitch, Make a comment. Press the like button. I I need Hold the up. validation. It makes me feel good. If you don't validate me, I do not exist. <laughs> Follow, subscribe, whatever, whatever you need to do to give us those alg algorithmic boosts. And I would like to say, don't don't fall in love with me. I do not support parasocial relationships. Okay, I know I'm a pretty cool guy, but uh, I'm not your I'm not your friend, guy, okay? So don't stalk me on my socials, okay? Don't tweet at me. And we've, and we've lost all of our viewers. Just That's all that. I have to say about that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I think I even stopped viewing after that one. Um, with that, where we left off last week, the party had faced down in the inn where they drugged not only the two targets of their admission, but also the old lady who runs the country club. Then they proceeded to sneak into the room of their targets. But instead of finding them perfectly asleep, they found the door held in place and a growling, snarling figure behind it. They fought this figure in a tough battle to unconsciousness and then tying them both up, stuck them on the back of skinkers and headed back to the ranch where they encountered Pa, literally trying to put a fire out, as the sheep shed seemed to be engulfed in flames. With that, if everybody would like to open up the Albe Rodeo, we don't have to go into it just yet, but that's the position that you guys are in. What you see around you seems to be Pa running around the the sheep shed trying to pat and and douse its flames with a you know a leather um folded over probably one of his uh, his aprons or something like that just a big heavy piece of cloth and he's just trying to beat beat uh, the flame out as much as possible he seems to have already been scorched and you guys find yourselves sort of in this formation with your prisoners and the skinkers, uh, sorry, I didn't put the skinkers there. With your prisoners and the skinkers where you are. Ahead of you, you can't quite see, but there seems to be a group of men, familiarly dressed. Let me find, where are my skinkers? Who was uh, top of initiative? I think it was Saul, wasn't it? But uh, whoever would like to go, we're not we're not exactly in combat just yet. Sure. Um, I would like to take my uh, blanket out of my pack and run over to this well over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, I don't know. I don't know how far up the water is, but I'd want to pull up either pull up some water or like just dip it in the water. Um, you can pull up some water. It'll okay. it'll take you a second. Okay, so I'll just use my turn to pull up some water. Okay. I mean, like I said, we're not in the order just yet, guys. Okay. So whoever wants to go, just please go ahead. What uh, what's what's Lula gonna do? Pause pause there, beating out the flames. He seems to be roughed out, and I know that uh, I can see that Lutando is engulfed in darkness currently. Thanks, Escom. But. Uh, but Lula is still with the party. Thank you, Escom. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, yes, Lula is still here. Uh, Lula is going to um, <clears throat> do a little scream of horror 
and she's going to make a beeline towards Paul, busy beat us, my word, towards Han, busy beating out the flames. Mm -hmm. She's going to assist him. Okay, um, what are you going to do, considering that you just ran over there? Oh. Oh, um, um. Yeah, uh, Luna's going to use her shield to like try like pass out to try like put out the flames. Okay. Yeah, no that that's that's fair. John, I heard you screaming. What's up? Uh I, he just shouts out, What's going on? And then uh, uh he runs over to uh to Pi as well. And he's uh looking around, not knowing what to do. It seems that the men seem to be crouching down, possibly retreating, making their way backwards. But um, in the chaos, they're not so so obvious. Who are they? Damn, bastards at the... And pot <coughs> just coughing through the smoke. Um, He's trying to beat it out, but uh, it's blazing. So I guess uh, John will uh, he'll wave his hand, speak some weird words, and he'll cast fly on uh, Lula and Saul so that they can fetch buckets quicker. Okay. Okay. And wet their blankets, quicker, I guess. Good idea. How is Pavel? I would say uh, Aslan is trying to control the skinkers. Somehow. Please roll an animal handling check. Sixteen. Yeah, yeah I mean you can you can lull them. Skinkers are um they're, they're giant lizards, effectively. So they basically get into <laughs> they have they have two two modes. You know, they feed and they flee. So at the moment they're getting a bit antsy, and you can just hold them into place um, so they don't run away. As I know to do this, Pavel, you haven't moved. You haven't done anything. How are you reacting to the situation? Yeah, sorry guys. I, I had a couple of things that I do for work. Um, uh, I am right now. Um, our song it's it's all doing his interrogation with the with a uh, on a guest. Oh no, the the flames are blazing on the sheep shed. You oh. missed you missed everything. Okay, the, the sheep shed is in flames. Everybody is rushing to to try and put it out. Oh yeah, uh, I, I'm just helping with the fire brigade then. Uh, okay, you go in there to to get to work with the buckets and and the lights. Yes. Um, until then, um, I, you know what? I yeah, I, I'm just going to do that for the time being. Uh, just focus on that. Make sure that the fire doesn't spread and. If possible, the sheep shed gets to be saved. Okay. You guys put in work and try and put out the flames. And in the moment, in, in, in the minutes that it takes you to do this, and it is a few minutes, the the group seems to have been able to to make their escape. Were they? Uh, did they head in the direction of where we know the camp to be at, the bandit camp? It seems to be that they indeed headed north towards the river, where you know the camp to be down the river. Pa is left sweating, drenched, and scorched from the flames, covered in smoke, coughing up a lung. And he does not seem to be happy about the current situation. His brow is creased, but 
He's unable to say anything to you guys as he just been has been double <coughs> hacking out of the lung. I'll uh I'll kind of pat him on the back, uh, kind of help you know just as a just trying to help him a little bit cough up and then uh, I'm gonna walk past him back towards the slinkers to uh, collect our uh, prisoners. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, said, I'll take the little one, and, uh, you know, since everyone's so soft on the big one that was trying to kill us, I guess we can, uh, let the others take care of that one. And I'll gesture for, uh, what's her name, the dwarven lady to come with me. Ali. Al. 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 If you call her Ali, she will growl at you. It's Al. <laughs> That's just fine. So, yeah, I'd like to take the little uh, gnomish fella into the. Uh, you know, I'll take him into the. I'll take him in the meat shed this time. Okay. I'm gonna follow suit. Okay. This Azan will pick up the big guy. Uh, try to tie him up somewhere. Lula is going to stay with Pa and actually also drag him a little bit further away from the fire and also check up on him because, you know, he was close to the fire, busy breathing in flames and smoke. You know, check on his throat, his lungs. Well, you know, just going to make sure he's A-OK and try and comfort him. And try, mm-hmm. you know, just look at our fucking rubbish. Burn to the ground. I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do anything about this, Lula. <clears throat> it's, uh, maybe we should have taken the money. Uh, pa, it ain't about the money. Now it's definitely not about the money, Pa. Definitely not about the money anymore. John says, Don't worry, Pa. Whatever money they got for the ranchers, took it back. We uh, snagged a couple of of those PIG reps over from the country club. We have them on our skinkers over yonder. Is that who Saul took in his shed? That's right. That was the little one. <clears throat> let me uh, let me step away just for a second, guys. Okay. That was the little one. Fortunately, uh, we were just trying to find out more info from whatever was in their room, but things didn't go to plans. The big one, he turned into some kind of bear. But, uh... We had to fight them and uh, subdue them. And uh, in order to not leave uh, evidence of what we did, we we brought them here. And we uh, took with them their chests and searched their rooms. I got some uh, letters and the likes between between, uh, them and the bandits, I think. So uh, hopefully that'll that'll help our case. It uh, looks like their hirelings are still active, so we might have to to uh, hit them back. But for that, I think maybe they, they might have done something with the water while they set the shed alight. Is there any way to, we can test it to see if it's been poisoned or not? There's a couple ways. I think it's likely, but I think they took your boy. Jameson? Yeah. It would have taken old man hair too if it wasn't for... <coughs> Voda. Bless. I can only imagine what they'll do to him. Maybe it's time we hit their camp in the daytime. 
once uh, once the others have gathered, we'll we'll talk about it after we and uh, we'll see what we do after we we've uh, questioned our two prisoners. I'm not gonna lie, I feel a little bit uncomfortable about y'all leaving again. Or after after what just happened here. Uh, maybe we should should gather the, the remaining ranchers, those that haven't left. Should all bring them here and have a talk with them all. We need to get organized. People are serious. Could could uh, it it clearly mean to hurt us all? I think they mean to to come back. And uh, <clears throat> I'm not gonna let them do it without a fight. That's right. Think you might be able to send one of your boys to go fetch them all, bring them here. Lula, yeah. let let Oda know. Sure thing, Pa. Sure thing. Hey, Oda, you lanky son of a gun. Where you at? You find Oda in the house, helping old man Hare, who appears to have sustained an injury. It seems that, uh, well, a bullet struck a wall or something, a large splinter came off and buried itself in his arm, and he's now nursing the wound with a bit of bandage and brandy. As Lula has known him to do. Uh, Lula's going to um, approach Oda, and she's uh, she's she's going to comment. Actually, you're actually useful for once, you lanky son of a gun. Never thought of it. And then she's going to direct her attention to Oda. Oh my word! It's old man here, uh, and just to you know, confirm with her own eyes that she that he's okay. All right. Well, what do you want? What's going? What what happened? Why do those bastards attack us now? <sighs> oh man. Oh man, I don't know. I don't know, but they're not gonna do it again. They're not gonna do you it again. You never were much for knowing things was you little. Though. Well all right then. Take your idiot brother, you two go and go and get the others, I guess. No, come with us, old man. Just come along with us. It's better to it's better if we stay together. I ain't in the mood for walking. Uh, Lula is not. Uh, Lula's not gonna let him finish that sentence, and she's just gonna pick him up. <laughs> he grumbles a little bit, but eventually accepts and leans into it a little bit. Um. All right. Uh, yeah. Lula's gonna relay the message. And yeah. What you do notice carrying old man hair is when you picked him up, he was uh, still rather shaken. But as he his hand reached to grab the brandy bottle as you were walking away, it seemed a mite calmer with uh, with your presence around. Uh, come on now, you down man, you can't you go uh, can't you go a day without drinking that stuff? Can't go an hour. Come on, Lula. Let's uh, let's uh, tell the ranchers. All right, Oda. let's go. Oda heads to the south, considering that it's the safer route, with the assumption that uh, you're intending to to tell everybody in the north, which was which is basically not many people anymore at this point. Yes. In the meantime, Saul, Havel, and Aslan have taken the other two into the meat shed. Right. Or the skinning shed, which one? I, I can't remember now. I think it was the skinning shed, right? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, skinning shed. I've, I've got our gnomish friend hanging by his feet. Okay, you make your way into the skinning shed. It's a familiar room to you. You know, this is where the skinkers are, are hung up and, and strung. 
and uh, there there is a like you said a large hook on a chain right in the middle of the room a couple of bags of salt sort of chucked into the back of it used for preserving the skins and um, you tie this figure up to to the <clears throat> to the hook and chain and drag him up till he's about face level which is pretty high yep. all things considered <laughs> and I'm gonna do the can we do the same with the the werebear guy uh, yeah there there are there's only one hook though oh, okay yeah uh, let's just get him uh, so we'll just motion for him to be uh, chained up okay secured and uh, I'll just try to splash some water. I think I've, I'll have like a bucket of water nearby. I'm just kind of like flick it into the face of our uh, little no- our little visitor. Uh, wait, this this guy's under the effects of Dreamweave, actually. <laughs> so let me make a roll to see if that even does anything. Because man is literally no, in a right. coma. Man's literally in a coma. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair. Uh, my dice fell off the table. I'm so sorry. Uh, um, dude is literally in a coma. Okay. Could, would <laughs> it, uh, let, me, let me pause at this, and you can tell me to F off if you think it's stupid. Do we okay. retroactively say that Saul had made like some sort of antidote if I pass like, a medicine roll? That way we can kind of keep the momentum going. If yeah, I sure, fine. Give me a medicine. Give me a medicine check. Okay. Thank you. We'll see. I might just fail it. So. No, you're welcome. But also, thank you because we do need to keep it going. Uh, <laughs> I did get a natural twenty for a twenty-six. Um, you know that uh, the easiest cure to dream weave is effectively adrenaline. So what uh, what you can do is grab something like a wasp sting or something that naturally makes the body react with inflammation mm-hmm. and then you literally just stick it into them and... right okay the little gnomish figure wakes his ass so, up so just yes yeah, so this pain really oh. um no not exactly it's specifically like an insect bite something that releases okay. like that uh that poison you know maybe there's like uh we said there's like some sort of like fire ant or something mm-hmm. kind of, kind of have that problem around here so it's easy enough precisely okay we'll do that yeah um so you put you know a small jar of fire ants just held to the side of his skin ooh, that was meaner <laughs> than i was hoping but yeah i, <laughs> I don't know uh, um, soul is pretty mean man the last he is couple mean, of years you're making yourself sound friendly so that was <laughs> uh yeah he he has something like that he just presses i don't know up against maybe good. the back of the guy's neck or something Oh, that's mean. Yeah. That's some well, fear factor I, Joe Rogan level you, meanness. You want you one upped me, so now I gotta one up back. <laughs> uh, so okay. yeah, that's how he waits. Make sure everything's together. I'll, I'll check the key again. I want. You there? Wake up. Kind of slaps him a little bit. <gasps> Do you know who I am. Huh? He shakes his head upside down. What's your name? camera upside down. There must be a way. There must be a way. That would be cool. It would be cool. But, uh... I'm not gonna lie. I don't know how committed I am, but I can just do this. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) He, like, looks at you hanging awkwardly. Do you take the rag out of his mouth so he can answer your questions? Oh yeah, of course. Let me find a nice place for this to sit. Just give me one secundo. John just stands there watching with the frown. Frowning at the no. Hey. Oh, where am I? Uh, hold on. Uh, Mr. DM, oh. by any chance, do we get the guy's name? Whose name? The gnome's name. So he just got asked. Yeah, I don't know if we he's, yet had it before. We just knew he, him as he's, like he's, he's, he's you, yeah, you guys didn't know it before beforehand. Even from the paperwork that we discovered, like his briefcase and whatnot, and all the title deeds. Uh, no, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Don would have seen yet. Yeah, this is more. 
even, even if we've seen that solid when I ask just to see if he lies. Okay. You know? All right. I, I just want to savage if you know his name. But Absolutely. yeah, that's a good line of questioning. Uh, one mister. Uh, Peck fumble if you like. It's Peck fumble. That's right. Is that your name, Al Mr. Peck fumble? Mr. Mr. Alcibiades Peck fumble. And uh, I don't know who you are exactly, but uh, I suppose I'd like to, yes. If, 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 if I haven't had the pleasure, please. That's yeah, not no, Peck got... fumble. Well, now calm down. Uh, yeah, we're... And he whispers into Saul's ear and he says, This might be a problem. Why would it be a problem? It's, uh, quite an influential family. He must be a relative of, uh, Professor Arch Archibald Feckfumble, the one we yeah. rescued from the mountain. No, I'm, I, gonna, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give a roll to see if he could hear the mention of, of the name. That's, that's my favorite nephew. DM. Well, maybe you can uh, answer a few questions for us then. Make it uh, quick and easy. The uh, What's your interest in the land here? We're here. To, we're, 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 we we invest in, 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 in pro property. Right, right. No, that's uh, quite, quite, quite good methods you have here. Um, Let's see. Will you hand me that that uh that journal you found, John? Let's see here. You said something about uh. He starts flipping through the journal as like the notes about like breaking us down and then taking over. Oh, that's the oh you know yeah that's a journal from the calendar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He starts going through yeah. the journal. He says, "Did you uh did you write this?" That's a uh, not my hand. You'll find. It's a, it's a bit larger than my little ones will do. And he sort of, sort of wiggles his fingers behind his uh, hand. Uh, are you, are you guys, do you know me? that gnomes are known to... Like, there's a difference in handwriting size. Right, so it's not his handwriting. So uh, would that be your friend's handwriting over here? <laughs> he, uh... Can barely, can barely string a sentence together. I don't, I don't think you'd find him writing prose. So, answer me this, uh, Mr. Feck Fumble. You're from such a reputable family. How come you're hiring bandits to strong out aren't honest ranchers out of their own land, poisoning their waters, attacking their livestock, hanging innocent old men on holiday trees? You notice his face seems to just drop with like devastation as as you just lay all of these things out in front of him. He goes, "Please." It's not not my finest moment, I'll admit. I know. I uh, I just. Uh, I, I I. I'm uh. Can you put me down? It seems as though the blood is running to my, to my head. Can I can I have a drink? I'll put more water in his face. No. <laughs> not that. Not that right. I mean, I mean something to properly drink. You know, like pull my hair. Uh, well, I, I, tell, I tell you what. For every, I'll, I'll uncork like a, uh, my bottle of whiskey. I have like a flask of whiskey, and I give him like a little sip. And I say, for every good answer you give me, you can have a sip of whiskey. It's, I understand. It's a, it's a lot of pressure, being. Being in my in my in my, in my position, right? Who who? Uh, I've I've got a good question. We know about your nephew's work, and uh, real curious if you know who it is over in your uh, camp that is uh, most involved in that work, because we know somebody is. I'll. I'll be completely honest with you. I've met one rather dashing hard chap and uh one 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 old man. Uh though I don't recall the old man's name at this point. 
the younger chap. His name was Hard, Hard Harder, I believe. Uh, Colt, Colt, if I if I recall correctly. He uh, he he has some connection, though I I'm afraid it is not in my nature to know the true weight of it. Uh, I was never. It was never the 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 the, the, the mem- memorable sort, you understand. Could I could I have another sip of that whiskey? Would you Would you mind? I don't know. Can you give me a name? A, a harder, harder brother. One of the harder brothers. Okay. Gives him another. I would, one of the harder boys. <laughs> he like sucks at the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Some spills into his nose. So you say you're under pressure. Poor except for villainy, wouldn't you? I, it's a poor excuse for my for my weight to the drink as well, though I'm afraid it's what it pushes me to. And he sort of like, woe is me. <gasps> um, I, I go to the uh, to Mr. Fickfumble. I kind of look him straight in the eye. And I ask him, it's like, do you work for the PIG? Or are you just a third party? I, I, I suppose you could say I'm the... What's, what's my damn title again? The... The account manager for this specific purchase of the property investment group. Now... I was sent here mostly to handle money so that my family knew that they could have someone they could trust. Oh, so PIG is a family enterprise. It's a Fekmumbo entity, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's uh, one of one of our many uh, investments. Yes. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. No. And I, I clasp him in the face, and it's like. You are taking innocent, innocent and hardworking folks from their homes for what purpose? What is the purpose of PIG acquiring so much land in here, out of all places? I, I know, what? okay? I'm sorry, I... Oh, oh no, no, that's, that's not a good answer. I, I grabbed the bucket from Saul. I put the I put a hand in his mouth, and I slowly poured the water down his nostril. <laughs> that, that's and very I'm, precise, I'm work, uh, Havel. You should know, Saul. And I look at him, but then I go back to Fekfo and It's like, did that help to jog your memory? Now. We already know why why they want the land. There's that shiny silver here. Yeah, but it's more a question now. Is it because of money or is it because of the property? Listen, listen. What my brother told me was, was this, right? He said that... He said that, that, that Archie, my nephew, the, the doctor, Dr. Archie, I... He, um, he had uh, a special interest in this place. And if I could, if I could secure it, then it might, it might mean me being welcomed back into the fold. If you understand. I was, uh, given, given responsibility that I did not deserve, clearly. Well, why do you say that you're not responsible or not deserve it of such responsibility? Well, look at me. Instead of getting the job done, I'm hanging upside down in a fuck. In a. God. Hello knows what. <laughs> I don't know. John, so, what do you want to do with him now? It's, I don't think we will get any much more. Well, uh, Did you say your name was again? Alchemides? Alcibiades. Alcibiades Fumble. People mostly just call me Alki. 
Yeah. I will. I'll key. Be able to answer me why we shouldn't just bring you out back and bury you? My family will give you a lot of money for my safe return. Oh, no, 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 no. Why no, would no. they? Just, you just said that, they, that you're disgraced. I bet they'd be happy to wash their hands of you. We can know. make it. We can make it look good. We could probably make it so that. There's a difference between disgraced and dead in a ditch now, boys. Understand that if I'm dead, it won't reflect well on them either. Now, will it? I can't protect their own. Dead, oh, killed by, killed by some hillbillies. I uh. No, oh, we we would I, make it. I pull I pull his head up and I start pulling I start pouring whiskey into his mouth way longer than he than I should. He, he gulps. He no, I know. Ooh. And I say, yeah, you just drink up. Ooh. 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 This oh, is, uh, and I take it away and I say, Bless your soul. I have a feeling that you could die in such a way that they won't even question. <sighs> well, if you're going to do it, can you at least let me finish that first? Then, then do what you must. Personally, rather you live and think come up with something yeah oh you know what um i just remember something from the last session um I, i'll go to um uh, alchemides that's like alchemides 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 all right don't you have something to live for i the drink it's it's my true love and passion is it? Um, Indeed. The only woman who ever held me tender was Brandy. Not not the drink, is it? The very same. It's the drink he's talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. Sorry. <laughs> no. There's <laughs> a way out of, out of this for you, if you'll take it. Let's say, uh, take a little walk. Go back to Tenta. You tell every, uh, you tell uh, all about this to the authorities. And understand that speaking against my brother is as good as death for me. There's the only way out for me for this is the bottom of the bottle. If we could, could secure your safety, would you turn on? On your brother? Because it seems like you're not really cut out for this type of work. I'm not cut out for any type of work. Never was much good at anything. I got a question. Uh, this big fella that's with you, who is he? He's, uh... My one true friend. My... My closest confidant. His name is, uh, Biter. Biter, that's great. Here's the thing: you're gonna go with my friends, and you're gonna tell the authorities everything. And if well, you... all right then. You. And uh, I'm gonna take like a fistful of silver out of my pocket. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go over to uh, I'm gonna go over to the werebear guy. Yeah. Biter. Well, at the moment, he's a Goliath. That's fine. Anyway, it won't matter. I think Silver still. When Silver still hurt him. Yeah. Let me double check. Actually. You hit him with it, right? Hmm. Yeah. If you I mean, hit him if you with hit, it. Okay, hit him with it. Yeah. But I could be wrong. Maybe it's setting. Yeah, I think. Uh, He's gonna look over at him. He says, um, "I think he's just gonna. I think he's just gonna take one piece and he's gonna yank the guy's mouth open and just shove the piece down his throat, mm-hmm. and then like hold the jaw shut." Eyes flash so, open. Oh, I'm sorry. Definitely giving him a shock, but he doesn't seem to be like burning in his. He's not burning. Okay. No, that's too bad. That would have been very dramatic if it happened that way. 
So, uh, silvered weapons. Silver. Well, okay. Yeah, but it doesn't like it's it's the it's the hit. Okay. Do you know? Do you guys actually want to know how I rule it, just for interest's sake? Is is very very it's, simple. It's okay. I don't yeah. want to question. It's fine. Good. Okay. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> so Alchemides, it's the brother that you fear. Alchemides. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a weird name, guys. Alchemides. So Alchemides. What? He's one of my favorite Alchemides. Greek heroes. Well, not heroes. He's a he's a he's just Alchemides. a Chad. Alchemides, the Chad. So Alcabides, which brother is it that you fear? Archibald? The professor? No. No, that's that's my nephew. But his father is it's not to be trifled with. We've, not met, the, we've not met the father yet, have we? We've met the uh Lutando, we can we can the title we we can see your phone. And it's whatever stop sharing. Do, it's, not, it's not it's not working. Don't stop sharing. Uh, presenting. Well, it might work if he if he turns his phone sideways. Maybe. But what if we see all of his lewds though? Yeah, I no, know. I don't want to see. I don't want to see what's under Tonda's phone. That'd be my, that'd be, my bad. Older... That'd be bad for the stream. <laughs> yeah, that would definitely get us taken down. Okay, back into the stream though, guys. <clears throat> my my older brother. It's um. It's Donatello that you need to watch out for. He's. Ruthless and and ambitious. Uh, where is he? Is he in town? He'll be at his headquarters in in, in Baygate, of course. He'll be at the Fekfumble Estate or possibly one of our many offices. It's a uh, you do you do understand the size of of the. Of our operations, correct? Yeah, uh, I fear we may be talking cross streams. Have you have you been to Baygate, my my friend? Is Donatello uh, a board member? Would John know this? John indeed does know this. Yes, he's a uh, a member of the board. I know of him. Powerful, so, dangerous to us. Powerful, dangerous folk. Uh, yeah, I reckon you're not gonna you're not gonna turn on him even for the well being of your friend here, I reckon, right? Let me Let's just run away, please, 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 I'll go. Uh, yeah, that didn't really help us though. That's the thing. Really what? Yeah. Run away? You've given hey. your testimony. Yeah, you get your you get to give your testimony. And then maybe the blue coats will let you run away. If you let me take some of the money, I know, I know you found the money. If you let me take some of it, I can bribe the blue coats, and possibly we can get away. How much would you? A thousand, perhaps two at most. Oh, it seems like they're getting. I'm not giving you a thousand gold. Yeah, that sounds like a bad idea. It sounds like a good way to get a bunch of mercenaries to burn down our farm. How about this? If you, uh... You can keep the gold. You make the deal with the blue coat. He screams at you. You, uh... I think you just... Make your testimony to the blue coats and we'll handle the rest. Tell you what. No. Nope. Tell, 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 you, tell you what I can do. It's real quick. So, if you give your testimony, speak true, I'll personally break you out of jail. I actually, I don't think we need to do that, gentlemen. I, I already have a good idea how to get him out. Now, Mr. Fake Fumble, I'll tell you this. You do uh, give your testimony. I'll get you out. You have Havel's promise. Can we have a little sidebar, gentlemen? Sidebar? Yeah, uh, the sidebar of was pull you aside, you know, outside of the... I don't see a bar here, Saul. So. Okay, sure. well, step out, step outside, maybe. So, uh, so the... As you guys step out, you hear, are you right there, buddy? Yeah, as, uh, as, as John is leaving the Misha, he looks to, uh, Archibides, and he says, don't go anywhere. 
as he's hanging there. <laughs> right. So I'm sure. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm noticing a fly in the ointment of your plan here, and it's um. If a big part of the deal is the authority we're appealing to can be bribed and we're trying to get somebody to testify against someone who's extremely rich and powerful, it feels like maybe we're just giving the blue coats more opportunity to line their pockets. It doesn't really feel like this is going to go the way you want it. I mean, if you get my drift. The, like, the intention isn't to get Donatello arrested. We just, okay. need to, we just need to ruin their whole name, put the truth out there of what they're up to. Once uh, they get a little dirt on their, on their family name, maybe that'll uh, shape them up and uh, possibly Ooh. bring others to our cause. So, uh, 15, 16 passive investigation. Mm-hmm. You read, you, you, you've seen the fake fumble name in a couple of places. Including the newspaper. I would just want to remind you guys of that one. Right. We just need to ruin their credibility. If there are enemies, then this would weaken their influence. Look, we all know that the fact from was uh, quite powerful and well, extremely connected. Heck, if anything, they're probably one of the, the ones that are running the government. But we have to start somewhere. Uh, I kind of agree with with John here to ruin his name, but I think we got the wrong audience. I think the Blue Coats really don't care. We need uh, to trial him or make it publicly known. Yeah, it's not about the, the Blue Coats. I do think we could uh, go into it and uh, definitely make a, a scene and uh, make a public appeal for all to hear. Just so that everyone knows what's going on around this area. My only uh, contention is the fact that the one uh, running the Colony Gazette is a fumble as well. So I'm not sure how how he'll report this. The uh, kind of what I'm talking about, I feel like we're going about this the wrong way. They really... Families... Yes. powerful like this, rich like this, we gotta make it so that it's the situation is untenable. Um, what do you propose? I, I, I propose making it so that people will not work for them over here anymore. Uh, I propose making the prospect of such so frightening that no amount of gold will buy them. I feel like I'm going to regret this question, but how? Well, we know where the camp is. I might not even need everybody to do it. Um, DM, by any chance, do what? Have, have I ever come across any type of group that is like against corruption or it's like a reputable source? <laughs> is, there, is there a beacon, and, is there and, like and, a beacon and, of good or establishment of like decent? <laughs> so what? Like, um, are you talking about me. like the, you know, the church? Do you think those guys are going to be the the beacon of hope and uh, an order and establishment that you need? You you don't want to go to the the, the cops, the blue coats, aren't uh, the beacon of hope and an order and establishment that you need. And uh, hmm, usually hmm. it's let me think. The corrupt colonial government that's that's stealing land and 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 clearly behind some of this shit. So let me think about that one. Hmm. Is there? Oh, an we can Somewhere in the world that we can hit up. You want you want an organization like the Harpers? Yeah, can we can we just shoehorn that? It would make this a lot easier. I yeah, we this we need a D and D movie, guys. We, uh, okay. we need a group that's led by Chris Pine. 
No, her, no, guys. So let's move on. All right. All right, all right. Uh, uh, all right so you know what? I, I I go to everybody. I think what we need to do is call for a town meeting and present him in front of the the town, the entire township. I don't know about a town meeting, but I was thinking closer towards the evening, we could uh, go into Tenton. And uh, at that time, the workers should be returning home from their labors. Uh, we'll get the most amount of eyes on this issue. Now the question is, do we do this first? Or do we, do we raid the bandit camp first? I want to poison the stew pot in the water ring hole over at that camp. Can we kill them all? One fell swoop. I can make it look supernatural even. Yeah, but that doesn't really make people doesn't really make the bandits fear us, does it? I don't even know it was us. If they if they think the land is cursed, they think that it's bad luck to be up here. If it's Look, I'm at I'm at the point where I'm okay with just going to the camp and shooting everyone. Okay. It's it's clear that they're not gonna leave us alone and that they'll they've already tried to shoot old man Hare, already tried to do hang him. I think at this point it's self defense. Yeah, it's finally here and now it's self defense. Uh, so I'm glad we agree. So what do you think? We hit the I think that, I think that or do we go to town first? I think uh, I think we need to take care of this camp problem first and foremost. And I am I appreciate that you feel like we need this guy, and you don't want to hurt anybody, but we really don't need him. He's not reliable. But we still need him. What do we need him for? For his witness. He's a witness for. We, we have we have his documents yeah but th that's just more uh that's just more evidence the more right. the more we can present publicly publicly the better right but he can just as easily refute that he's already said that he's more scared of his family than he is of us oh we could just send in uh havel as him you know, that's a thing havel can do uh i don't think i could uh sorry john don't think i could shrink that small yeah. so so we, so we do need him and it doesn't matter whether his uh, testimony is or isn't uh we just need to we just need him to help people believe in what we're saying but either way I, i'm not uh not really to uh, just execute a man. I want to execute him. I would. Uh, I would take him out to the desert somewhere and give him about twenty bottles of whiskey. Just let nature run its course. It's a, a very elaborate execution. But I don't, uh, think, I don't think it's that elaborate. I think it's pretty straightforward. Hmm. What about mortal combat? Well, sure. That's. I think we're all in agreement. That mm, okay. Um, but I think it's just a waste. This is an opportunity to have some uh, some uh, public relations in our favor by using this man <laughs> and the crimes that he's done. If yeah. you think that we can safely keep mm. this guy here, look, we only need to we only need to hold him for a day. Yeah, I know, but there's going to be a whole night where we're going to be gone. No, we we would raid the the bandit camp. You remember remember what happened during our last night raid? Yes, I do. Which is why I think you should. I don't know. Maybe let me. Do that How about we just attack them in the daytime? We. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm not convinced that that wouldn't just happen. Look, Saul, you can't have all the fun always. I'm not trying to. I'm sorry. Just, you know, once you start poisoning people, it's it's hard to stop, you know. Aren't you our cook? Yeah. <laughs> Please don't. Stop, but... 
I'm just playing. I'm just playing. It's, it just it feels like a really fast way to do it. I'm all about efficiency. You know, they quite as fast as the bullets. Now let's. Uh, put your way to a man's heart is through his stomach. What what time? What time of day is it? At this point, it's probably around mid to late afternoon. So three, four p.m. So here's what we we, we, we go. should defend the camp, or we should defend the farm tonight. Get rested, get ready. We hit them early in the morning. Oh, they're yes. still sleeping. If we have time, uh, maybe we can travel to the towards and go do sure. our thing. So how do we how do we want to secure our friends here? Um, is there a cellar in the main house? Is there a cellar? Mm hmm. There is Indeed, a there is. Oh, big guy. Big guy is going to be a problem. Tied up. He's tied up, yeah, but he can turn into a giant fucking bear. I, you know what? I asked Allie how your tattoos work. I mean, Al. Don't call me Ali, okay? It's Al. My apologies. Yeah, I, got, I gotta follow call me Al. Al. That, that's quite the change of subject. Um, how does your tattoo work? You, you're derailing stuff. Is there a reason that you're asking that? No, because that's he has the same thing, right? That Goliath had tattoos. Okay, but Goliath tattoos are tribal tattoos yeah. that are like oh. indications of their status, whatever. Different, Sorry. different tattoos entirely. Sorry, Sorry, my fault for complicating it. No, it's okay. I have a question. It was actually have... just the, the cool stat block that I found. Yeah. Al, I need to know. Uh, there was a fella you were scared of whenever we attacked camp the first time. Um, was he the one that conjured whatever the hell that thing was? I, uh,. I think it comes out of him. That's cool. That's great. Uh, I have a follow-up question. Very important. Why the hell wouldn't you tell us that before we get I, there? I, uh... And she looks at you and she goes like, I, I was hoping it wouldn't come up. It, but that, see, that's <laughs> vital information. <laughs> um, yeah, but in order to keep my vitals going... I thought it was just probably best to avoid the thing, the whole subject entirely. Right. I think in the interest of your vitals continuing, you need to tell us everything relevant starting now. So, is there anything else you want to tell us? You know about the Hardy, the Hardy Boys, right? Uh, we know a little bit about the Hardy Boys. We know that one of them never got recovered and is in league. Most likely, whatever these things are. You know, they're aligned with some brain eating monsters. She looks at you and goes, Well, I, uh, I, 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 I haven't heard that one, but what? What? Look, what? John goes like this, and he conjures up a, a minor illusion of the, of the tentacle. Uh, the the tentacle faced creature from the mountain. She shudders. He says, and they seem to use these things as a transport. Then he goes and changes it into the into the tentacled ship. Uh, and then he shows like the um, the orbs of light like coming out of the ship, and it, it looks like the same uh, multicolored colored orbs from the night before. All right, those those things, those things, and she points at the lights as you go. There. They they, so like, um, the 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 the, the squid faces. He that he uh, he looks he looks like that, and uh, and she looks at you guys, and you guys see like the horror in her eyes. Every time he uh. He, you know, flips out. Those lights seem to follow him. They come out of nowhere. Nowhere he, where he sleeps. 
It sleeps. He doesn't sleep. He's, uh... I don't even know if he's a man anymore. Right, so... Where is it located? That's gonna be a problem. Um, you seem to have resistance against these things to begin with. It seems they come from your tattoos. Did somebody in the camp give you that tattoo, or did you just have that tattoo for a while? Got these in the joint. You got them in the joint. In the clink. Lock up. Right. Who gave you that? Because that doesn't really seem like something you should be able to get in such a place as that. It was a... Uh, a boss. It's a... Uh, it's a long story. Is it? Is it really relevant right now? It is relevant because we're fighting weird brain-eating creatures that deal exclusively in the sort of magic that my friend here does that you're resistant to. So yes, I think it's pretty relevant. She just looks at you guys like confused as everything you said so it seems just uh um he uh I think you're talking about this one and she like points to the one that seems to go like across one of her shoulders and uh he says it's supposed to stop people getting in my head okay did he uh then John smirks and he says it has its limits sure but it has its uses too could you recreate but, it like I think we're overcomplicating this I don't think we're overcomplicating we got plenty of time we got till the morning and it's a this thing nearly ate our lunch last night Look, I, I can create, uh, I can shield both of us from these mental intrusions. It won't make you immune, but you'll be resistant for certain. But she was immune to telekinesis. Can you do that? Tell her what? Your telekinesis, you're moving things around with your mind. It seemed like she could resist that. Is that what it's called? Uh, yeah, I read it somewhere. <laughs> so uh John looks to to Allie. Um I don't know if I'm I don't know how to do this. I'm uh, I'm, I'm I'm no artist, okay? That's fine. You know what? It was a long shot. What was the guy's name? I'm gonna write it down in my book. She opens her mouth and then she closes her mouth, and then she stares at you for like a hot minute. Because John, could you she, could you speak this like, long? I don't really like talking to her all that much to begin with. She's making it harder. So, hey, give her time to just. You're you're asking for her to give up someone who gave gave her a gift. I'm not asking her to give him up. I just want to know who did it. What would Getting a tattoo he's a dead. Crime, a tattoo okay. A he's I'm dead. Sorry. He's dead? Killed him? I didn't kill him, but... Why'd you kill him for? He's dead, okay? Can we can we cut it out? I would like to make a sketch of the tattoo for memory later. Yeah, uh, she, she has a... She has a couple of them. Um, If you want, we can... We can yeah, we, we'll do it later. Go we over can. them, yeah. Um, she seems to have elbow, shoulder, chest, knee. It's okay. There's a couple of them. <laughs> it's okay. I'm most. Um, it's 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 less about wanting a tattoo and more about trying to figure out who this guy was and whether uh -huh. he's connected. Sure. It is. Yeah. Sure. Soul just being creepy after Bill Cosby being everyone in the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you have no idea where this where this creature is. It's not within the camp, is it? He uh, he, he rules the roost of the camp. Like, like most of the time, he's a uh, he just he looks like a dude, okay? And then and then and then the sun goes down, and shit goes down, and then you know. And she wiggles her fingers at her mouth, making tentacle. So would you be able to 
to be able to recognize the daytime. I can, I can point him out. Shit, I can describe him. He's, he's really good looking. Hair color, his eye color, height. He's Wait. uh, he's uh, pr pretty tall, built like a, like a. I don't know, like some sort of fighting Adonis. So got got muscles, just scraggly beard. I, I think his eyes are green. So usually keeps his hair short cropped. Understood. Yeah, he sounds great. Real heartbreaker. Yeah. Or mind flare. Yeah, he, sound, he sounds wonderful. I'm going to feel real bad killing him later. Probably be like the like the Goliath. Imagine he'll he'll true form, form will show once he's under dirt. Oh. So let's, uh, how about we, uh, how about we set a post for the night and get ready for tomorrow's raid? I would like to spend um, the early evening before doing all that and taking like stuff, or I guess a long rest. Um, could I take a moment to uh, in the forge area because I know we have like a little mini forge area? I want to make uh, I want to take the silver in my possession and make a uh, chain out of it. If that's okay. With my okay. Are... Uh, and then I guess, yeah, I guess we that. get to, sorry, go, uh, go ahead. What'd you say, Nick? No, you can do that. You, okay. You've worked the forge here before you know it. Okay, excellent. And, uh, you want me to roll Tinker Tools? Please. Okay. If you would. So at this point, John would go, would go through the gold that they stole. Mm-hmm. And uh, he would divvy it out amongst the five of us. Sucks. I got yeah. one. I'm gonna use my inspiration point if you're old because that sucks. And <laughs> and he would also uh, take the time to read the read the the letters, the piece of paper that he got from underneath the bed, uh, and the PIG letter to uh, contractor, and the two mystery scrolls that he absconded with as well. Okay. As you open the PIG letter to the contractor, the letter seems to be written in some sort of code. As you read it, it is an inventory list. It says, we would like to buy and the purchase of, you know, 70 feet of, of, of fine hempen rope and uh, 400 uh, lamp uh, covers and three casks, uh, three times 30 casks of oil and it seems to be effectively what looks like a shopping list. But the more and more you look at it, the numbers are unreasonable. And it seems to be some sort of some sort of message. Okay. Uh, he would definitely it's very important to try to decode all this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, I don't think comprehend languages would help with this. No, it does not. It's not the sort of thing that would would do it I'm afraid um, as you as you open the two mystery scrolls help okay yeah sure oh sorry what was the other thing so there was the letter to the the contractor the two mystery strolls I know what those are What's, yeah. what was the other one sorry and then there was also there was a letter underneath the bed the letter underneath the bed thank you um, the letter underneath the bed seems to be a letter addressed to um the little brother is what it says at the top and it is four lines <laughs> it says this is more responsibility than you possibly deserve please do not proceed to act how you've acted in the past please proceed to be a responsible human be uh, a responsible uh, person don't screw this up again signed on the tether effect bumble. All right. And
and uh, the two mystery scrolls I can open up for you whenever you're ready. Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, flip a coin. Heads or tails? Heads or tails? Tails. Tails. So tails are odd. <clears throat> As you open up the scroll, it seems to be a a letter written in pro in 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 prose in four stanzas it appears to be a love letter to my dearest ta uh uh sorry i can't remember the name right now my uh, anyway to my dearest and it seems to be addressed to a woman and um while the first stanzas are praising her beauty and her her love and it seems to be an admission of guilt. And as you read it through it, the last two stanzas actually appear to be very sad and they seem to be apologetic until the final lines read, and so my love, I say goodbye, for soon I know I am to die. And it is signed by Alcibiades for example. Okay. As you open the second one, it appears to be a suicide note. Also signed by the hand of Alcibiades Vic Bumble. All right. Um, John frowns at this and he just says, So, uh, seems like everything that told us so far seems to be the truth. That's great. I, I hold up the silver chain I completed. Like, how does this look? Does it look good to you? I got a 14. It looks right. Yeah, I feel like they should get the job done, and that's about it. Be right back. Okay. Uh, does everything that uh, John just said, It was everybody present, or was it just Saul and John? I think everybody is present. Lula and Oda, at this point, are returning with most of the ranchers in tow. It seems that um, even even uh, uh, Mary Bell, um, uh, Mary Bell from the the general store is coming, from the the, the ranch store is coming, and uh, it seems almost the entire area. Everybody in the in the hamlet and the surrounding uh, farms and homesteads has been brought in. Everybody left anyway, but thirty people total. Um, you know what? I'll go to Alcibiades. Uh, Alcibiades. Alcibiades. Alcib. B. B. Alcibiades. Okay, I go to Alcibiades. And this time I just go one on one with them. And I says, So, you lied to me. Why you do that for? I, I was telling the truth the whole time. What, 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 are, you, what are you speaking about? And it's like, you do love somebody. I, I, I had a girl once, but his love long lost. Hmm. How long ago? M many more years than I care to count of this one, one norm sorry existence. Now, Alcibiades, you could do something right. Um, t tell me how you brought how you go. Was it a little bit too much of the of the fine water that you've been drinking? Is it the company that you keep? I've always been partial to the drink, but uh, I'm afraid not. I'm afraid it was my brother who stole her from me. 
Oh. Plot thickens. Well, this changes things. Nah. Acabides. Am I saying you right now? Acabides? Now, Alcabides. Do you think that you're not worthy for your brothers or your families? Ah, oh, Alcabides, my friend. They're not worthy of you. In spite of all the BS, all the B bull crap skinker crap and any other crap that your brother's been laying on you something tells me he's not worthy of you and you could correct a whole lot of wrongs that you've done but you know what I think it's something that your brother did to you and I think you should stick it to him this time around What do you say that you stick it to your brother willingly? Yeah, like I said, I'll make sure you live. I'll find a way to get to get you out of harm's way. But you will testify, and I will. I'm gonna wait for his response first. I mean, he he looks at you, but. The brief glimmer you see in his eyes is, is, is a snapshot of a second. As he puts his head down, he goes, No, no, I'm much too old for revenge. I'm much too old for youthful games of romance and pretend chivalry. This isn't a game anymore. Who said it was again? It's redemption. It's recapturing your soul. That was, and I point to his heart, I tap him in his heart, and it's like, that was taken from you. You should take it back. It belongs to you. Now, I'm not saying the girl, I'm saying you. Our community is fickle for. Fumble. You should get that back because that belongs to you. Doesn't belong to your brothers. Because right now, you're not even Arch Archibedes. Arch you're just Donatello Fick Fumble Pelpit. You're not even a little, you're not even a brother. You're just the puppet. Now, sir, you shouldn't be that. Do you think you're telling me anything I don't know? Do something about it. You always. I don't do want to. I don't care. I'm done. Don't... It's been too long. Now, listen, boy. I can I can see that you're still full of youthful indulgences, but please forgive me. That I'm not. I'm happy to just live in peace. Hmm. Living the way you're living? That ain't living. And I walk out. And I close the cellar behind me. At least I'm alive! He shouts back at you angrily. You hear? <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't have a better answer than that. I'm usually better, I know. <laughs> um, John would like to take the, the shopping list, quote-unquote shopping list, into the mm. shed. And he would, uh, I guess he would uh, walk in there looking at like a handful of papers, and, uh, you know, all the papers that he found within the room. He's like mm -hmm. um, shuffling them in his hand. And... Uh, he says, uh, he looks between the papers and Archi uh, Archibides. And he says, yeah. Alcibiades. Isn't that what I said? Alcibiades? 
It was close enough. Sorry. So, I mean, it's honestly, if, 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 if you could just maybe write it in the general yeah, chat. I'll do that. That's a probably idea. help. So, uh, it says, man, there's some, uh, oh, there we go. Ah, just call him Alki. Oh, we're not, we're not that close. So, so, uh, he says, it's like your rough time, in life, huh? I'm almost uh, sorry to hear it. But uh, I need your help. Uh, I'm looking at the shopping list, and it definitely doesn't look right. There's more to this. There's a hidden message, isn't there? What is it? He goes and uh, presents the paper to him without handing it over. Now, I think if I was supposed to know, it would be written in such a complicated code. <laughs> of course, it was in your possession. What's the purpose the of the code if you can't read it? I'm the delivery boy. From whom to whom? To the harder brother. I think you know from whom. Right. You know, if there's only one brother left, because we killed killed another. I, I heard there was a baker's dozen of those boys. But uh, half of them were locked up, the other half dead. So I, I couldn't tell you how many are left. I, so, I think I, I think I keep track on, on rapscallions or whatever you want to call them. We just call them bandits. But uh, so the only one that you know of then is Colt Harder now. I, I've met Colt. He's the cruel man. Indeed. Do you know of the one who, who, who is above him? Tall, handsome, dark, short hair with the green eyes. That'll be the that'll be the man himself. Colt himself. Why? Oh, this is this is striking chap he is. Right. All right. So uh, we got plans for the morning, but uh, later on we'll, we'll grab you tomorrow. We'll make our way to town so you can say your piece, and you can. After that, whatever you want to do, I'll help you. Be it to uh, run away, or if you want, you can stay here too, and we'll protect you if you'd like. You would find a place on us. Do you uh? Here. Do you have any drink for me? I do. I have a bit of uh, tequila left. Quite as lovely as brandy to your taste, but you're welcome to it. I'm a fan of the old cactus juice, I am. Then he goes and uh, he sticks a hand in his throat and he, he pulls out uh, a half bottle of tequila. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he gives him a smile and he says, Enjoy, but uh, try and save some for later. Do yeah. you untie him? Um, no. <laughs> he like look. He looks at it with sad eyes. Like, okay, I guess he'll he'll like he'll uncork it and then he'll he'll give them he'll give them a swig. And then you can leave it there. I'll I'll, I'll I'll figure out how to get it. Yeah, he recorks it. And he sets it on top of the table next to from where he's swinging. Actually, I lie. I guess I guess I'll leave it uncorked. He'll he'll set it on the table next to him as far as i can tell if he's been chucked in the basement he's not swinging anymore he'll just be tied up oh oh he's in the basement yeah he's oh, in the cellar. Head right in the cellar yeah oh okay uh, i case, would like i would like to secure our wear bear friend with the silver chain as well okay that way i'm saying it so the okay that's what can be pulled later sure fine you said it gotcha i said it so i don't want to hear later like you never said that you chained him up <laughs> you are specific. Well done. Good Being job. very specific right now. So, so I want to win the game. Since he's in the cellar, he'll just uncork it and uh, leave it next to him. Nice. But, okay. but 
But he said, uh, when he asked to be untied, it, he, John says, soon. And then he leaves. Thank you. Yes, I know that one was much nicer. And then uh, that's it. I, um, I guess we would do our little test, maybe like feed some of the well water to the chickens, see if it dies or not. Yeah, so effectively what, what Paul is going to do is uh, grab a bunch of earthworms, chuck them in some dirt, pour the water over them, give it about a minute because they breathe through their skin. And if they they die, it's been poisoned. Nice. You notice after about a minute? Nothing. It seems the water's fine. See, that's, that's all I'm saying, John, is if they did manage to poison our well water, it would be sort of a, like a poetic justice sort of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like if I snuck in there and just poisoned their well water. Look, next, last time you went in alone, we had a... Let's just do this together, can we? No, it's fine. It's... And by the way, I found out some more information from our friend... Turns out that Colt Harder is our squid-faced man. Oh, that's great. That's great, then. Um, not frightening at all. Not, not horrifying in any way. Well, all that means is that once we see him, we just shoot him first. So do you think he's... Do you think the Fick Fumble family is, like, willingly working with these things? Not sure. Possibly not. Uh, I guess we, we might have to ask. I, I, I know I've voiced it before. And uh, just in case you haven't, you don't remember, I think it's very suspect that when we saved his nephew in that cave, that he was alive to begin with. True. But uh, if that's the case, what, what would we do with the information? How would that help us? I'm not saying it would help us. I'm saying that we should be aware of that in the future. Maybe me. Yeah. More the, questioning of the Feck Bumble family. It's an appalling thought to think that the, the invaders have a, a member on the board, Baygate. That would make things grim indeed. Especially when they can mind control people like they did to Aslan. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's, we'll it's have to uh, get in scary stuff. So, say it, Aslan, say it. I can see it building. <laughs> what? No, I can see you. You were like, you got the Aslan face on. It got me all excited for a second. You, you didn't think of something? Oh, bugger, man. Sorry, I called you out like that then. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys should get some rest. I'll be on watch. Sounds good. I'm gonna go sleep. I actually have a question before we go to sleep. Like, um... The two hand mm -hmm. axes that Aslan had, they were silvers way back then, right? You've silvered two of your hand axes, yes. Who, who did that? I don't even remember. He who shall not be. No, it was, a, it was your artificer friend. I thought it was... Saul. No. Soul silvered bullets and he silvered he made something for Lula. Mm, is it possible to like melt the silver? And I guess he wouldn't be able to do it. Okay. Well, well, well your hand axes are coated. But it wasn't the hand axes, was it? It was the the like the regular B3 Golden Gate. Yeah, hand axes are my old smaller weapons. And then he yeah, switched he, to battle axes. Yeah, I don't think he had battle axes at the Unless Yeah, I'm... you're right. I will I will gladly silver his battle axe. B2, B4. This is the, the front of um, lock and load. So how much gold each did we get? Four. From our heist. After okay. dinner. Glass door. Is this so, a glass door? Yes. As you start opening up and B2? the chest. You pull out the okay. first bag, counts it out. Right. It seems to be a bag. We're about they have two doors. Of gold. That's the only door, only key we got. And you pull out another bag of about 300 gold. 
Then you pull out another bag of about 300 gold. And you get to a total of about 2,500 gold in these bags of 300, which you assume to all be the same size at this point since you counted out the first one. And this chest is full. It's pretty stacked. So it's 2,500 total? 2,500 total in in, in just these, these gold bags. What you also notice is there are a bunch of empty bags. <laughs> and it seems that maybe for more reasons than one, Alcibiades was not performing his task entirely as as stipulated to him. If that makes sense. It was, he, he was embezzling. So yeah, he's, yeah. Gonna divvy, he's gonna divvy it out. He's gonna go to each member and he's gonna, with a really big smile, he say, here we go. We earned this, and he's gonna lay into each of their hands a 500 gold bag coin. This is great. Wow. I'm gonna retire. I wanna build a restaurant, put my name on it. This must be almost a hundred. It's uh, quite a bit more than a hundred, friend. Fifty? Closer to 500. So, about 100, five times over. You can see him trying to do math with his fingers, but it's just, it's not clicking. Yeah. Like Aslan probably doesn't have a concept of what 100 actually is. He just hears this word 100. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, uh, John and Havel, each of you, uh, each of you take three temporary hit points. Okay. Nice. From what exactly? From the chef feet. Mm-hmm. Like what are you doing thing. with it? I, I'm just making breakfast. So just before we head out. What do you mean head out? Is this in the morning? Right? Yeah. Told you what happened during the night. Okay, that's fine. I'm. I'm. Say, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't want to forget. Just in the morning, make sure you mark down three hit points. I know it. Just do it now, and then I'll do it again in the morning. For a long time. Well. How about you let me tell you what happens during the night? That's and then fine. We can see if you even make it to the morning. That's How fine. Does I'm, that saying, sound? I'm saying dinner time right now. I'm giving you three points. Okay. I'll do it again in the morning. Okay. So you're making dinner. That's what you're trying to say. Understood. Yeah, I'm, making, I'm making dinner. And then later on, yeah. maybe I'll make dinner. That's very reasonable. I thought so. You guys settle down for the evening. Soul cooks a nice meal. Everybody looks at it suspiciously after. <laughs> After Saul's comments during the day, John, yeah. you want to say something? Yeah. So once John starts, uh, once he gets on watch, uh, before it gets too late, you'd want to cast sending, him, and uh, he would want to contact his mom. Oh, well, yeah. Mother's Day episode, y'all. Call your mom. Yep. And that echoey, watery voice, mother would hear, Mother, it's me. I'm all right. I hope you're okay. Listen, I need dirt on Donatello Fect Fumble. Help me. That was 26, but I'll give it to you. <laughs> Can you help? Still? Gets the entire message across, so it's good. John, my baby, um, I can ask around. You know my sources. I, do you mean the gnome on the board? Eee. He would cast it again, and he would say, "That's right." been involved in some shady business harming honest folk need dirt against him i love you mom be safe i love you too my baby uh if i find anything what how, how do i get it what do i do what uh how do i tell you how do i get it to you <laughs> uh Another hour, hour goes by without <laughs> the event. 
Okay. <laughs> he would cast it again, and then he would say, Don't worry, I'll contact you. Better there, no evidence. He is a dangerous man. Or a dangerous gnome, we say. Okay, I love you, sweetie. Be safe, be careful, look after yourself. Don't forget to change your underwear. I hope you're eating good. <laughs> and that's it. Then he'll just go on watch. As you're watching in the night, shadows move in the moonlight. Please make a perception roll. With your with your passive perception, you notice something moving out there. Okay. Enough to give you a chance to to perk up and make an active perception roll. Yeah, he would see something out of the corner of his eye while he's writing a book. And he'll look up and see what it is. Yeah. Gets a 17. Yay. With a 17, you indeed do notice that seemingly approaching the ranch from the skinker pen in the south figures. At least three. They uh, are hunched over, sneaking, trying to keep close to the side of the road where it seems where there's you know small ditch, keeping an eye out, making sure they haven't been seen. As they slowly tiptoe towards the ranch, you see them through the tree line as you're keeping watch. By the, the way, at this. At this point in the evening, Saul has made a large meal for all of the ranchers, and the entire ranch house, as well as the spare house where these guys seem to be sneaking past, is now full of all of the people in the ranch around, and they seem to—they're all camping out around you guys. Okay. So, where would have been a good place for for John to post up? By the way. I was about to say, burn. yeah, the sheep shed burnt down, so that's not a good place to post up anymore. Probably, actually, the skinning shed, which is the skinker shed in the south there. This one here? Yeah. Or the the first one. That would be that would be the the place. I oh gosh, I'm isolated over here. Okay. Um. I think it's not unreasonable because there would also be, you know, ranchers and stuff sleeping in there. Okay. That so, um Yeah. That possibly people would have would have would have been with you, you know. It's, it's I, I I wouldn't say it's unreasonable if anybody wants to come join you over there. Because there's probably people sleeping in the skinning shed right now. Like civilians, like ranchers. Alright. From the hamlet. So as soon as John sees them, he's going to uh, quickly stand up and bring a hand up to his glasses. And he's going to say, everyone, alone, Zera. Cast hypnotic on the. Okay, I need to make a what wisdom? Wisdom DC 17. 17. That's a big boy wisdom say. One makes it. One might make it. Let me see if they have plus anything to their wisdom. Plus one, he does not make it. One makes the roll. The other two stand dumb. Would you like to describe what the spell looks like as two of them drop any instance of being sneaky and just seem to gaze into? Yeah, it would. it would look like one of the spheres of psychic fire and it, it's green and it just swirls into existence and it floats into the air and it catches two of them and they just stand there in a trance looking at the the sphere with their mouths agape okay the two that are under the hypnotic passion and i'll be engulfed in green but but it would be kind of loud wait turn off <laughs> You know, just swirl there in place. Nice, nice. I love the sound effect. Do we wake and... up with the sound? 
<laughs> I think everybody would hear that sound, yes. I'm gonna wake up. Damn straight. I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna go outside and see what's going on. Same. You yep. hear ranchers, you hear people, and you hear the bad here. Now what the hell would they? <laughs> what was that noise? Oh, do I see the people, the trespassers? Well, that depends where you were, but if you are somewhere, uh, if if nothing pattern doesn't make light or anything like that, does it? Yeah, it's. Is it bright? Yeah, making it a, as a, a large sphere of psychic fire, green psychic fire. Yeah. Sure, but even the people who aren't like um, hypnotized by it, they still see it, right? Yeah. So by the by the glowing green light of John's magic fireball thing, you do see these figures. Two of them now just standing, staring dumbly at it. I've seen this before. So yeah, you have. I'm gonna the guy that doesn't look like he's hypnotized. I'm gonna shoot at him. Okay. Where is Soul? Great question. Um, he's by he's you know, probably, probably in the main house. So you know, you could have been sleeping. To be fair, you could have been sleeping wherever you want to be sleeping, but you will have to move to get line of sight. Yeah, I think he probably would have moved to uh, one of the outer houses so that like the people that we have visiting would be safer. Yeah, that's fair. You can you can be in the you can be in the ranch hand, uh, um cabin. This is the bottom right hand corner one. Yeah, that's John, fine. John would be on top of the roof. Okay, so he's gonna step out. He's gonna see those guys, and uh, he's gonna open fire. Is it the one at the front? It's the one at the very back. It's the one at the very back that isn't uh, stunned. He's gonna shoot at that guy. Yeah, the one who seems to be trying to copy John's style. Oh, okay. Yeah, kill him. Yeah. Gotta, <laughs> there gotta, can only be one. We gotta put a stop to that. Um, Alright. And I guess I should have had this already, but uh, it was just gonna be two rolls. Um, it's okay if you don't have it ready. Just make please. your shots, boy. 26. 26? I think that hits, eh? And then, uh, does the 13 hit? No, it doesn't. Okay, I'm gonna use, uh, one key point to bump that up to 15. Would it hit then? Does not hit, I'm sorry. Alright, I'll use two key points to bump it up another two points. <laughs> to 17? Seven. That doesn't hit, I'm sorry. A 17 doesn't hit? It appears not. I'm gonna use my last third, uh, not my last one, but I can only use up to three and make it a 19. That hits. That hits, yes. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Got faith. Oh. Damn. Uh, actually, sorry. My bad. My bad. My bad. I uh, take that back. I didn't read uh, shield. They're currently not equipped the shield. It's actually 16. My bad. Okay, so I'm only using My mistake. Point. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You're in, uh, point to get to it. Uh, you jacked it up first to 15. You have to jack it beyond 15 to, to get the hit. Okay, so you use, use the second key point, but not the third one. Okay, so you 16 AC. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Um, so. Okay, so that is a total of 21. And that's my turn. Okay, how much damage? I said 21, uh, 21, 21 points of damage. Turn. And I guess I'll uh, I'll move in such a way where I'm... Uh, okay, well, you take your shot. And I mean, if we're moving in initiative order, that means I'm up next or someone before me. Uh, what's your initiative? 16. Mine is also 16. All right, I think you have higher agility. You can go... All right. Uh, well, it's gonna be quick. Aslan, as he hears this commotion, he's gonna get up from his uh, lumber on the yard, and he's gonna dash ninety feet, to get within okay. vision of the of the battle. That's it. 
Okay, that, that's all you're doing. Who's keeping initiative? Oh, actually, he's gonna rage as well, and he's gonna withdraw his axes, and that's gonna be his turn. Okay, Aslan rages. Good to know. <laughs> nice. <Ooh. to> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> someone had to. <laughs> As Aslan rages. What did you get, Nick? Sorry. What initiative did you get? Sixteen. Uh, I'm off to Aslan. I, okay. I got nine. Sorry. Uh, so that means I'm up now. As Aslan rages, this guy gets shot. Shot through the heart. Sorry, my bad. <clears throat> Didn't break everyone's earphones there. And nope. he decides, Get down! What are you idiots doing? The fuck? And starts making his way out of there, retreating. As he retreats, he's not actually going to take a dash action. He's going to move there. So just basically back 30 feet as far as he can go. And he's going to pull out a pistol and take a shot at the roaring, angry barbarian. Which misses in the night. What you guys may or may not notice is something else happens as well. Sorry, Havel, I don't have my things up. What's your passive perception? Uh, passive perception. Havel, I think I muted you. I'm sorry. Let me unmute you, bro. You were talking earlier. What's your passive perception? 12. 12. You don't notice anything. Um, oh, and also, uh, if I was muted, uh, I think John was taking initiative. Yeah. I already put a initiative order. It's there. Where? You're on it. You're on Let's it. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Well. So after me is okay. Lula. Yep. Lul, are, are you in the main house sleeping in Lula's childhood bed? Um, I'm assuming that's where Pa is. Yeah, I'm assuming that's where Pa is as well, yeah. Yeah, so I'm basically going to be... Lula is basically going to be with Pa, keeping an eye on him and, like, you know, watching his leathery ass. So, I guess with my turn, uh, since Lula heard all the commotions and gunshots, she's going to um, look out the window to her left, I assume, that little slit in the wall there to see if there's anyone there. And then she's going to go to the north where that white uh, like door is and she's going to uh, peek out and see if she can see anyone. I know for a fact you don't have night vision, do you? So, dark vision. Of course not. That's not going to stop me. We've been setting torches up and around the property. Um, oh, yeah. Sure. Destroyed. Okay, fine. However, that being said, I don't have the lantern markings that we made that time. So I'm just going to say there's one on each corner, one on the well, one on each corner, and around the houses. Is that yeah. fair? All right. That's fair. Yep. Okay. Um, so in that case, even with dark vision and the amount of glow that the torches have, you can make a perception roll, fine. Oh, perception. Ah, uh, hang on, let me please some of this app is loaded. Yeah, you wanna you you do you you're you're saying that you're taking your action to go and check out what's happening outside the window, right? That's I am being Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, closer to where closer to where Pa is. I gotta make sure he's safe before I run off. Yeah, okay, gotcha. No, you can you can move there to the to the window and see what's happening. Please take your your perception roll. So slow. In... I'm gonna fucking phone against this wall. Jesus. It, who who is that? You mean Pelor, our holy lord and savior? Sorry, Pelor by Pelor's holy fire. I'm gonna destroy this object that I'm using right now. By Pelor, watch me. <laughs> watch me. what. What the sending stone in your hand? You're gonna you're gonna throw it through across the wall. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, fine. It got some perception. Jeez. Take uh, the Escom. Thank you. Wait, yeah, you have no, disadvantage. 
No, no, you're good. We just okay. Got this I, got, I got a respectable sixteen. Sixteen. I can't remember which one is which, um, so I'm just gonna unmark two of them at random. Ooh, there are figures across the ditch on the road, seemingly trying to make themselves unseen. Um, where are the figures? Across the uh, at the at the road. The upper right. The upper right. Upper right. Side. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, so that's it. Okay, good, good. Um, Lula's um, okay, Lula's going to end her turn by um, giving Pa a tomahawk and her. Pa Tom grabs his shotgun. Now what am I going to do with that, Lula? He's best you keep it. Um, show the, uh, all, all right, Pa. You stay safe. You stay safe. You stay safe in here. And she's going to step out the door and she's going to, um, you know, start engaging those two individuals. Okay. How, how are you going to start engaging? Well, I used an action to look, so I guess uh, she's going to run as far as she, as she can. And she's gonna say, "Now you stop right there, you two uh, uh, sneaky sons of bitches." Okay. With the shield out, because uh, anything could happen. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Nice putting it out there. Is that your Thank turn? You. That's my turn. John, you're up. Nice. He's gonna beam the guy that that just took a shot. Okay, uh, uh, it's well within your range. Go ahead. Who's moving the guy around, guys? That's I didn't mean to. My, my my browser's on this. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a twelve. That's a, a fifth. He just misses, and then he he goes prone. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> that, that, that's really unfortunate. Dude, uh. The Indy Beyond is rolling really fast right now. So nice to see. Nice, perfect. I don't know if it's just... Thank you, D&D Beyond, for rolling quickly. We do appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for doing something right for once, WOTC. Let's, next let's, is... I'm not saying thank you. Next is Havel. Let's, let's not say anything. Havel, you're up. All right, uh, from where I'm standing, is that a window? Like a bench in a window? To the right yeah. of me? That's okay. a window, yes. Uh, do I see them from where I'm at? I mean, with all the perimeter lights, torches, I mean. Do I see them? To be fair, Lula noticed them with a pass with a perception roll of 16. Your passive perception is what, 13? 12. 12. Um, you don't notice them, no, I'm, I'm afraid not. Uh, Lula shouting at someone though and running in that direction. Yeah, you you know just Lula shouting at someone running in that direction. You know that she's clearly she's she's seen someone and she's spotted someone and she's calling them sneaky sons of bitches and running in that direction. Alright, so um, you know what? I'm gonna run out. One, two, three. Could you guys role play for like thirty seconds, sorry. One All right. I'll be back as quickly as I can. Stop right there, you sons of bitches. Um I was like, where are you seeing them, Lula? You point to them. Uh, uh, Lula's going to point, uh, she, Lula's going to point uh, in the direction where she sees those two sneaking bastards, and she's going to say, those two are sneaking up on everyone, and they're going to cause some mighty nasty trouble. Okay, so I am going to cast, once again, uh, Nathir's Mischief. And I am gonna. Wait a uh... You know what? Let me do that again. And I, I, I go to Lula. How's your paw doing? Pa, pa is a determined son of a gun. He's ready to deliver some swift uh, six, um, 12 gauge justice. 
I believe he would. Your pa is a mighty fine. He's a good man. By payload, he is. By payload, he is. All right. Does uh, everybody see that square that I just drew? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, DM, I'm going to need a... Oh, I need to roll a D4 first. Please stand by. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for someone to say that. <laughs> to do that. Uh, <laughs> I need a wisdom saving throw, please. Some so elevated those... music in the background. A wisdom <laughs> saving throw, you say. Yeah. Um, do you think it's fair? Uh, okay, so what the, the spell is a area of effect, right? Like it's a, you, yeah. you pick an area. You well, can oh, tell. I'm sorry, what? No, sorry, continue. You, you, no. The spell is, but the spell is you pick an area, right? That's how it works. I I, I pick an area, but um, I kind of pinpointed the general area because I asked Lula. It's like, tell me what you see. Where are they coming mm -hmm. from? No, yeah, no, no. I understand that. Um, I think the the square wouldn't go exactly there, but it's close enough that I will, I will make your saving throw. Um, what do you need? Wisdom. Uh, yep. Six, uh, wisdom saving throw 16. Okay. I have all four dice. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to assign that one, that one, that one, that one. Save. Natural one. Save. Uh, that plus. Not enough. Two failures, two successes. Let's say the ones who are currently visible. Fuck, I just spoiled the surprise because I'm so bad at this guy. <laughs> I really suck. It's hard it's hard to it's hard to do things when you're rolling and thinking about a hundred things at the same time. Anyway, yeah. the two that are visible are currently affected by whatever. Alright, um yeah. both of them I tell uh, uh You guys are so ugly. That my friend, my friend here, Lula, could see. There's no darkness dark enough to hide your ugliness. You're damn ugly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, no, that's, that's not a vicious mockery. What's that cutting word? No, it's no, it's not. It's supposed to be. I'm supposed to make a funny. I'm, I try to make myself laugh and not them laugh, but they're supposed to be going to a giggling fit. Ah, one of my favorite spells. Yes. <laughs> uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> As and, two female voices just break out into uncontrollable, absolute chaotic laughter. Yes. You hear a further shout, revealing revealing another figure, going, oh, "What the hell is going on?" Oops. Uh, <coughs> sorry. With that being said, uh, they're incapacitated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I know. I know what the spell does. And they put some move on. And uses all it, the movement to go in a random direction. All of its movement. Okay. Uh, D eight random direction or D four random direction? Uh, it's a D eight. D eight. Okay. They fall into uncontrollable laughter. This one goes one, two, three, four. Goes one, two, all of its movement. Three, four, yep. five, six, that way. This one, one, two, all of its movement. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you guys hear as hideous cackles of witch-like laughter echo off into the night. <laughs> as uh, Two, two women's voices go laughing off into the darkness. That was nice. I tried. I put my effort into that one. I hope it, I hope good, it was man. good, man. good. I appreciate it. My throat's actually a bit sore. <laughs> it's too high for me. Anyway. 
Is that your turn, oh, Havel? Yes. Um, they break out of it. Uh, Start of their next turn, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Soul, you're up. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, I'm going to run up to the guy that was running away. Uh-huh. Um, and I believe I'll be able to overtake him pretty easily because of my monk speed. If you um, dash? I mean, I don't think I need to dash, right? How much speed do you... Oh, yeah. No, that's fair. I, I thought it was further. I um, wait, let me, let me, yeah, okay, yep. So, um, he's going to shoot as he runs up towards him and miss, but once he catches up to him, he's going to enter a flurry of blows and hit him twice, just real mm -hmm. quick, like once in the back of the neck, and then once in, like, the kidney, uh, mm -hmm. for a total of 12 damage. Okay. And first hit, I am going to spend a key point to trigger a, a stunning strike. Okay. Hey. He fails. Excellent. Uh, that means that second one I would have rolled with advantage. Let me just do that. Make sure I don't get a crit. If you get a crit, yeah, you can you can add some more damage to that. Okay. Uh, it was close, but not quite. So um, that's his turn. Okay. Good to know. Aslan is a barely out of range. Saul, he has a better idea. Actually, he's gonna pounce on the first guy he sees that's hypnotized. And he is raging, so yeah, and he's gonna start hacking at him viciously. Uh, yeah. first attack hits him for six damage. Does he snap out of it? Don't ask me, I don't Gone. know. John, does he snap out of it once he's hit? I think so, right? He does, right? Hypnotic pattern. He snaps out of it once he's hit, right? Uh, you are muted, sorry. I'm... Man, I, I, I can't hear you. The mic, Your mic is not picking up or something. Kaio, hello? Sorry, what's the question? If he gets hypnotic hit... Hypnotic pattern, if he gets hit, does he snap out of it? Yes. Yeah, okay, so... Aslan hacks into him doing the first six damage. He's like, <gasps> and suddenly looks at this giant Leonin barbarian <laughs> in front of his face. Yeah, and as he wakes up, he, he wakes up to another battle axe going straight for his chest and is going to sink in for another seven damage. Terrible way to wake up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he's not happy. That's for sure. And one more for good measures for another seven damage, which is going to total up at 20. Oh. Nice, good turn. Yeah, that's the end of the turn. That's that's good damage. Yeah. That's a lot of damage. That means I'm up next. Hey. So, first guy with Aslan in his face is going to <laughs> and pull up pistol from his belt that hits which strikes you sorry this is my first time with this 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 stat block so let's see what he actually does strikes you for a total of four piercing damage and after the four piercing damage which you can have to two of course you notice that another uh, goes through your body and um, you take an additional 12 poison damage, which you can, of course, half to six. Got it. As this slug seems to slam through your side in a very uncomfortable, stinging manner. Saul, the guy in front of you, stunned, can't do jack. Two laughing ladies snap out of it. How much movement do they have? What are you going to do? This one is going to move that way. No one sees what happens there. No one sees what happens there. Well, gunshots echo out from the other two in front of you. One aimed at Lula, one aimed at Havel. Both miss. And that's my turn. Mm. 
Wait, 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 wait. That might not be my turn. Did the, did those did those ladies have Tasha's hideous laughter affecting them? No, no, no. no? Something else. Okay. It was something um. Else. You hear a voice yell out. Um, All right, then. It's not that hard, is it? And as it does, let's see if this does anything. If I roll... Nice. Okay, I rolled a two. I got it. Lula, that means the shot against you hits. <laughs> Sorry about oh, that. Shit. Okay. Um, And That's that fine. does... Oh, God damn it. So that does six piercing damage as the slug strikes into your body. But as it does, it burns through you for an additional 18 poison damage. Because that was a bloody good roll. Okay, so six plus 18. Okay, that's fine. Um, I, I um, Early on, did we take a short rest early on? I believe so. Been- yes. Yeah, we had dinner. Yeah, actually, we, we should have had a long, oh, okay. Okay. long rest, right? No. Mm, okay. Unfortunately, not. But with that, that's my turn. And that yell also broke the stealth. So you guys notice another figure who seems to be okay, crouched. Okay, uh, Lula is going to... Besides um... the tree over here. Hmm? Lula, it's your turn. Another figure reveals themselves uh, just to the to the west of the tree, southwest of the tree. Lula, are you there? We lost Lula. No, I think I think oh. I think South African South African oh. internet has won again. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. Uh, oh, you're right. So we're gonna, internet has one again. Uh... Okay. Okay. Do you want to take a shot? Take a shot at that guy, Lutondo. Give me all of your rolls. Tell me tell me at the end of your turn, uh, unless there's something else you want to do. But I think we should uh, we should accept that South African internet has won and move on to the next person if you don't it mind. It has won. It has won. It, it's won to the point where D&D Beyond crashed, so let me just reload that page again. <laughs> okay. Lula does whatever Lula does. Okay, I'm back in back. John temporarily. You tell me what you've done when everything works, yeah? Guess what? Eldritch Blast? Yeah. I guess right. Oh, shoot. yeah, boy. Let's do the Eldritch Blast. He's going to shout, Hero Ta! He's going to shoot green eye beams at the target that Saul is on. I should... Actually, is the guy in front of him, or is Saul blocking the shot? You're elevated. I'll let you make the shot. Okay. So he'll do that. He'll stand up from his prone position, and he'll cast Eldritch Blast. First one is a 16, hits him for 10. Second one is a 15, misses. So a 10 force damage on him. And then John goes for again. Still a good hit, still a good hit. Oh, yeah. I get struck and he's... <laughs> Dude is not looking happy. His blood leaks from the corner of his mouth and his nose. Lula, have you got all your rolls for me? Um, uh, how do I roll critical... Uh, how, how do I roll critical damage again? So the first one is maximum and then just take whatever the second dice says. Yeah, just... Okay, so the first Okay, so maximum is uh, so 10, and then the second dice is uh, no way. Okay, so okay, so Luna rolled a uh, 24, she rolled a 19, mm-hmm. that, that, makes it a, that, that makes it a critical. Nice, um, champion fighter, let's do this. Yeah, yeah, so uh, she returns fire by shooting that man that just shot her, uh, with uh. 20 damage altogether. And um, she ends her turn by yep, yep. shouting yeah. shouting explicitives to the man and taking cover over here. That's a big hit. Nice. Okay. 
Um, yeah, you can get you can get good three quarters cover cr- crouching behind the little stone wall around the ranch. That's your oh, turn. Yeah. Yep, that's my turn. I can't shoot again. <laughs> Simultaneously, as Lula's shooting, John is blasting off Eldritch blasts. Havel sees Lula dash into the wall. Um, Ali, uh, Al has made a way across the the burnt out ruins of the thing. Havel, what are you doing? Okay, um, so for uh, my turn at the beginning. Um, the, I have to re-roll for that cube, so I rolled a, the four, which is a four. So that entire cube now is the considered difficult terrain. Cool, good to know. All right, um, those two that ran off, the laughter is done. Yeah. Well, whoever is in that cube now is considered difficult terrain. Um, I move up. I'm not going to stand next to Lula, but I'm going to be at the wall. Um, mm-hmm. Do I see the two individuals now or yeah no? you can see them they both revealed their stealth oh okay they're no longer, they're no longer stealth with that being said i will uh seeing that lula took a took a shot and and uh and she looks a little greenish even in the dark this um i pull um a new puppet yeah it's a little bit of a horny devil thing of a jake and i point at you mean you know, a I'm horned a horned devil puppet okay gotcha yes. gotcha not not a not a little horny puppet because i feel like it's a totally different thing <laughs> Sorry, not this channel. Not I, this I, channel. I will. A I, horned I will, puppet. Gotcha. A, a devil uh, silhouette, and I cast pain gotcha. on both of them. Okay, so that's oh, minus the no, force to everything. No, 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 no. I, I can't do that. Sorry. Yeah, I pain. apologize. Concentration. Yeah, I, I'm gonna get rid of the other one. I'm just gonna. It's okay. I'll get rid of it. But uh, you want to drop the concentration on that spell? Uh, no, I'm not going to do bar, uh, uh, Bane. Okay, so you want to keep that spell up. Gotcha. We gave you a rifle, right? Havel has a rifle. I, I do. does but, have a rifle. But, you know, I'm I, I'm not a rifle type of person. I, I, I will have to do it if I'm desperate. So, the one that shot Lula, I give me a... A... A wisdom saving throw. Give me what you want. Give me what you want. What you really, really want. That's probably a fail. Um, what what happens? I tell him that, hey buddy, you know what? You don't want to shoot us. We're your friends. <laughs> I think what you should do is, you should take your guns, all your weapons, and you should just. Toss it to us. I promise that we won't hurt you. What do you say, buddy? Was that a suggestion? Um, it's charm person. Charm person just makes this person think that you're a friend or an ally. Okay, so he stops shooting at us. That's right. Yeah. Okay, you know what? One he looks at you and he goes, "Wow, we're off at that." And I was why, like, why, why can't everybody just get along? Yes. War. What is it good for? <laughs> That's your turn. Yes, sir. And you know what? Um, I go to Lula. And it's like, Lula, you must defend this house. And I'll give you Bardic Inspiration. Give yourself a D8. So well, you're up. D8 what? A D8 to use on your Bardic Inspiration. Oh, sweet. Uh, Lula's going to uh, thank Carvel with a quip, uh, with, with a quippy, um, with a quippy, there's a bear shit in the woods there now, Havel. The, the what, what? Of course I'm going yeah, to defend this house. Oh, you're up. Okay, um, I'm going to shoot uh, this guy in the back. 
for eight oh, points God. of damage. And then I'm just going to hit him in the back of the head for an additional five points of damage. Okay. He's not looking happy. Okay. That's your turn? Yep. Aslan, what you doing? Aslan is going to hit this guy three more times. First hit. 10 damage. Gonna fall. Uh, okay. Does 13 hit? No, it does not. Okay. So the second hit is going to go whiff right over his head. And the first axe is going to come down smacking from the bottom. But it's also going to whiff. Okay. And that's his turn. Take a couple of wild, crazy strings roaring in his face. Unfortunately, they're not as successful as they, as you would have hoped. That's yeah. As you finish your turn, you hear. Ah, I'm not sure what it was, boss. As this guy seems to break and run off. The guy fighting Saul to being bashed on the head, tries to raise his hands and step back. And Saul clearly doesn't let him do this, closing the space between them and, and having his attack as, as, as he did in the last turn. So the guy drops to the ground and basically covers his head <laughs> and gets into the defend yourself when, when someone's kicking the shit out of you position. <laughs> the guy fighting Aslan to be fair, he's not fighting for his life. Misses a shot, whiffs it over his head, drops his knife, tries to pull out a dagger, and stab it into Aslan's side, and just like <laughs> desperately slashing with his small blade out at Aslan. Fortunately, not doing enough. But what does happen is this lone figure steps forward, says, Now y'all get out of here. Not worth it. Not gonna do anything. I'll deal with them. And he walks through your difficult terrain. One, two, three, up to the face of Lula. And oh, stares God. at Lula and Havel. Why don't we just talk like civilized folk, huh? And that's where he stops, and that's where I'll end my turn. I think we uh, we continue on with Lula, then John, then Havel. But uh, effectively, the only person fighting back is the person fighting Aslan. Okay. All right. Um, L Luna's going to uh, Luna's going to say to ha uh, Havel, Havel, yay or nay on big big bad and ugly in front of us. Um, I, I got say, a shotgun right here. I, I say we just you could take him in and take him as a prisoner, or we could do it. Do the do, do I know is that like he's a leader, or he just seems like a run of the bell bandit? What do you mean? He, he is the leader. Look at him, he looks like a type of cult guy, like. He looks like a, he looks like the biggest, baddest son of gun out there. Oh, you know what? Then I think we should take him in as a prisoner. All right, your funeral. Uh, Lula hops over the fence, uh, takes out her uh, rope, and uh, um, doesn't want to step into the zone of uh, difficult terrain. Yeah, he looks and... at you. Hmm? He looks at you with okay. your rope and like gives you a look up and down, like. Um, uh, Lula's going to, you know, like <laughs> smile, and she's gonna say, don't, "Hey, hey, pal, don't you worry. I'm just gonna get you out of this. Uh, <clears throat> I was gonna get you out of this predicament. Now this ground here is kind of difficult, so let me just tie you up real you nice know? and tight first. Uh, and and she's gonna tie and she's gonna tie him up while he's still in the difficult uh, terrain. If 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 you throw him the rope, he's gonna grab the rope up in one hand and like wrap it around his elbow. He's gonna be like, 
Now don't you worry about that nun, pretty little lady. And he's going <laughs> to just pull himself, stepping forward into the thing. I think, Aslan, if you want to continue your turn, you can continue being the shit. If anybody else wants to do anything else, they can continue doing that in their turn, because that's more than six seconds. Lula, I'm sorry. Yep. Um, I, I, I just... Gun is up the... next, technically. Sorry, Havel. Yes. Yeah, so John's going to try and beam the guy that Aslan... That, that is still fighting Aslan. Dirt. Yeah, you guys still fighting? Uh, what are you doing? Well, if he's still fighting, John's going to... Yeah, but if he if he's surrendering, then I won't. Don't he's, get him. He's, he's busy like him. lashing out with his knife. The guy fighting Soul is surrendering. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He'll he'll he's targeting the guy lashing out with his knife. Hits him with yeah. with a twenty five for nine four. Second part of the beam. Uh, sixteen hits. Right. Yes, it does because they don't have shields up. All right. So second part of the beam hits for twelve for a total of twenty one force damage into his uh into his chest. Nice. That's a good hit. Hell yeah. Um, he's still standing. Oh. Then, um, Chong goes prone again. I guess, Havel, you're up now? Uh, Are you going to join the interaction with Lula, right? Yeah. I just, I just tell him, it's like, it's like, you know what? Yeah. How about you, you trust us? Uh, this is kind of a sticky situation. Yeah, kind of. Kind of stuck in the molasses. Eh? The pun? Molasses? No? Okay. Uh, and it's like... How about you just be cooler? This doesn't have to be a sticky situation. Yeah? Ah, I like your humor. Your humor is very good. But, um... Yeah. Uh, the, way, the best way to get out of this spell is... Is just turn around, fall back, and we'll catch you. Yeah, no, he's not going to do that. Soul, you're up. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> while the guy's down, surrendering, I'm gonna. T- this is gonna be very bloodthirsty, but I've got too much to worry about. I'm taking out my shotgun, and I'm shooting him for eight damage. Yeah, sure. Okay. Is he dead? You you want to executioner style him? Yes. How about this? I'm, I'll I'll roll I'll roll his his death saving throw. He fails the death saving throw. Yeah, so he's dead. Soul straight up puts a shotgun to the back of this guy's head, and yeah. mafioso style executes him in front of John and Aslan. That's fine. And then I'm gonna run up on the guy that is engaged with Aslan. Yep. Blanking, you have advantage, yes. I'm going to attack him with advantage for six points of damage. Yep. And, uh... And, uh... I'm going to spend a key point to do an additional flurry of blows. For how much damage exactly is that, my good sir? Uh, well, I need to roll to see, because I wasn't... You didn't roll it already? No. Yeah, bro. No, the one you I have didn't roll. Attack did not roll already, okay? The 17 to hit. I wasn't <laughs> sure if I was going to be able to get to That hits. How much damage? <laughs> okay, that is maximum damage for 10 points a day. This guy's not looking happy. Okay. That's your turn, though. Aslan, you're up. I'm going to step away just for a minute, guys. Sorry. Um, you're good. Aslan is going to grab his two battle axes at the same time. And he's gonna bonk him on the head with reckless attacks with the blunt side. Kind of like how they do in the cartoon. Gotcha. Please make your rolls. Okay, so they both hit. Nice, love to hear it. For 11 plus 6, 17 damage. Plonk. 17? That's more than you need. You knock this guy unconscious as his bloodied and beaten form falls to the floor. And that's it. All right. I think with that and me up, uh, we can drop out of initiative order, right? Sounds good. Yep. Yeah. This figure wraps this rope around your arm. And he looks at uh, Havel, who says, if you just fall back into our arms and pull a tr- do a trust fall, then, then you know everything will be all right. He just smiles and grins at this. 
with the rope wrapped around his arm, he pulls himself forward into Lula and Havel, stepping forward into you guys' spaces, making himself ominous in your presence as he does so, you know, squaring <laughs> up and standing a good couple inches taller than both of you. And you know, Lula's a big girl. Havel, Havel's tall for, for, for as skinny as he is, you know? Yeah. And he looks down at both of you and goes, now, uh, why don't we just talk nice, huh? I think that's uh, in everybody's best interest. What he is. Yeah. And it's like, all right. It's like, follow me. We'll take you to the rest of the group. <laughs> I don't think you uh, understand what's going on over here. You're gonna, you're gonna stay right here, and you're gonna answer my question. If that's it. No, I, I, I honestly think it, you know, it's better we do it via committee. Havel, I'm going to give you a chance to make a dexterity saving throw as you say that. All right. Uh, dexterity. As you say this, and a smirk appears across his face. 14. 14. And as the smirk appears across your face, he seems to raise his hand towards you, pulling you a little bit closer. Then as he does, just put a foot into your suplexes and with his, his entire force, seem to kick you over the small fence with unnatural, like this is not human power, this is an unnatural level of strength. Just kick you straight over the wall, back into the yard. This is Sparta style. Just puts his foot into his boot into you, just whoosh, shoves you. Wait, 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 Oh, ho- oh my god, another crit- another critical, okay. All right. Uh, so, yeah. So that's this nine. Great. To... This is great nine news, plus... yo. Nine plus six, 15 damage. 15 damage, that's a good hit, Lula. <laughs> and as you do, you strike him across the face. And you just... No, it's, uh, it's, thir- it's 12 damage. Oh, 12. He loads 12, his face back damage. at okay. you. Clicks his neck, clicks it in the other direction, and he looks at you and he goes, "No, I wish we didn't have to do that, little lady." But uh, I guess now we'll see how things go. And he loops the rope around you and pulls you, and you can make one dexterity saving throw. That's all I'm going to give you for this one. Sure thing. As he tries to ro- loop the ro- the rope that Lula has now tried to pull it around her and pull her into him. Alright. And hmm, okay. as he does, he steps with his whole figure forward in the moonlight. He seems to almost glow for a second. And Havel sees as he shoves Lula back into the wall, into the small fenced wall around around the ranch. And as he does, the hand that's wrapped in with the rope seems to dematerialize and turn into a long tentacled arm that wraps around Lula's form. His face seems to open up as an eye just drops out of his skull and raises on a stalk to look at Lula and then look around and look at Havel. And his other arm seems to dematerialize. His shoulder, you hear the pop as it dislocates itself and his entire uh, side of his body seems to slink down into another long tentacle figure that raises itself up. The others start running or making their way and whatever they want to do as his other eye and his mouth seem to fall once again out of his very face. And his eye raises itself on a stalk, and his mouth raises itself in two snapping jaws, which seem to just. And with that, I think I'd like to end the session. So, if you'd enjoyed this so far, 
please do give us a follow. We're so close to being Twitch affiliated. And if you've enjoyed it, we'll be here at the same time, the same place, next week for Quest and Quill Facing the Frontier. That was horrible. Anything else anybody would like to say? Yeah. <laughs> got... By bail order, that was crazy. <laughs> well, I hope you had as much fun as we did. Until next week, when we see you again, I hope all of your roles in natural 20s. Have fun, everybody. We'll see you next time on Quest and Quill. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs>